Minor League Baseball underway at Myrtle Beach. Ticketreturn.com field, Pelicans Park, where the Myrtle Beach Pelicans are taking on the Winston-Salem Dash. And that's Joey DeMichael off the end of the bat. Strong arm for Hanser Alberto. Three up, three down, nothing across for Winston-Salem. We'll go to the bottom of the first. The Dash, nothing. The Pelicans coming up on the Minor League Baseball Game of the Week. Back in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, Dick Gabriel, Doug Flynn, Lauren Gardner, Minor League Baseball Game of the Week. We are in the Carolina League tonight. This is high Class A baseball. The Pelicans playing host to the Dash. And this is the way Myrtle Beach will come to the plate tonight. Chris Garia leading things off. Hanser Alberto. See Preston Black, Preston Beck in the lineup. Native of Dallas out of Texas Arlington. Drafted in the fifth round by the Rangers. And they're going to go against a young man you see on the hill for Winston-Salem. That's J.B. Wendelkin. Workhorse this season, five and six, giving up just 16 walks in 89 and a third with 69 strikeouts. So you've got to think the control that he's been showing, they're going to notice that upstairs. Yeah, he's got a good arm. Uh, Record doesn't indicate that right now, but he does have a very good arm. And one thing you find out as you move up from college ball or high school ball to professionals, guys hit that fastball a little bit better than they did in the level below. But once he starts getting a little better command and getting his breaking stuff over, great time talking with the coaches today from both sides and the philosophies that they have as far as developing players, not only if they're skills as a ball player, but with their attitudes. Lauren mentioned it's a very comfortable night, 73 degrees, wind blowing out 20 miles an hour, and it is slowed down somewhat, but there is more rain in the forecast here in Myrtle Beach as Chris Garia stands in, a switch hitter. And playing tight at third base, Grant Buckner. Mundelkin, six foot 220, he's from Guyton, Georgia. Spent time last year in Winston-Salem. Started the season in Greenville, playing for the Red Sox organization. Traded last season. Shipped it over to Kannapolis in Loe before moving up to Winston-Salem. Wind is going to push this one. Rondon on the run. One out. Well, that's a shortstop's ball all the way. You like to see your captain of the infield take control out of those things. It's going to be a tough play for your third baseman running backwards and trying to catch it. And Rondon does a good job. Shows great speed and never gave up on the ball. We've been moving around the minor leagues this year, of course, and so has that young man. Rondon two weeks ago played in front of our cameras down in Charleston. He was with Kannapolis in low A. They like what they saw, moved him up. Now Hanser Alberto. You heard the pop in the mitt on that strike. Doug talked about well, the arm. Once again, Ron Dunn claims he has it, and he does. Two out. With a little flair, I might add. So Wendelkin, an economy of pitches so far. Take a look, emphatically, he calls it. Yeah, this is the way you're supposed to do it. Let the outfielder know there's no doubt about it. Wave him off. Wow. Slap that thing in the glove. Now Nick Williams, 6'3", 195, Galveston, Texas. Taken by the Rangers in the second round in 2012. And again, Wendelkin popping that mid. 91 miles an hour on that fastball. We know he's got a good arm, and he's shown so far not only good control, but a good off-speed pitch. Hammer to left. Kane and Walker goes back. He looks up, and that is gone. <laughs> Kane and Walker drills it the other way. Or rather, Nick Williams, I'm sorry. 
That ball got out of here in a hurry. Well, he came back from an injury. Take another look. He just goes with that pitch. Yeah, you could tell by the sound off the bat that he hit it pretty good, but you can see that it carries well, too. Not very far down the line in left field. Might have used that wind a little bit. Yeah, wind gailing out that way, and as we understand, it's going to be close to 20 miles an hour for quite a while. Now the cleanup man, Jorge Alfaro. I was going to say, Williams injured, came back from a rehab assignment in Arizona, and last Wednesday was his first game back, and on his first game back against the Carolina Mudcats, he knocked one out of the yard. So a one nothing lead for the home team, and Alfaro will try to extend it. He's already driven in 55 on the year. Yeah, they're just starting the second half of the season, too. As we said, an outstanding first half. Mentioned the Pelicans, part of the Rangers chain. Winston-Salem plays into the Chicago White Sox big club. Alfaro, also known as the Bull. In some corners, they're already calling him the legend because of that powerful throwing arm. When Delcom with a good off-speed pitch that time. And he made a decent pitch last for the home run, just threw it on the outside part of the plate. But boy, good hitting by Williams. Missed with a breaking ball to Alfaro, 6'2, 218 from Columbia. Non drafted free agent back in 2010. Just a raw talent. And that's the end of the inning. But the big fly puts Myrtle Beach on the board. We'll go to the second inning. Pelicans won, dash nothing. Minor League Baseball on the CBS Sports Network. Myrtle Beach won, Winston-Salem nothing, and nothing like scoring a hat at the ballpark, even if it's made out of balloons. you got to love that. And patriotic, I Absolutely. might add. Absolutely. A long 4th of July weekend, one nothing. The home team leads it. Fans are still pouring into Pelicans Park. Well, we had talked earlier, maybe the crowd might stay away if they thought the weather was going to be a factor. Not tonight. Nope. Jason Coates to lead things off the cleanup hitter for the dash of Winston-Salem against the left-hander Luis Parra. Perfect first inning. Third-ranked left-handed starting pitching prospect in the Rangers system entering the season. And if he can develop quickly, as you know, a left-handed pitcher will shoot his way up through the ranks. Off the end of the bat, Alberto. Easy play. One out. Take a look at the way Myrtle Beach is playing defense tonight. Around the outfield, Nick Williams, Chris Garia, Preston Beck, Luis Mendez at third base, Alberto at short. Christopher Bostic at second base, Kevin Torres at first, and Alfaro behind the plate. Now Kean Barnum. Brad Dean joining us now here in the booth, president and CEO of the Myrtle Beach Area Chamber of Commerce. Welcome. Well, welcome to Myrtle Beach. It is our pleasure to be here, believe us. Listen, I, you guys brought some offense with you. The Pelicans <laughs> put some uh, runs on the board right away. I thought you were going to say you brought a little weather That's with you. That's what I thought he was going to say. Listen, I'm a lifelong Cubs fan, and I've learned the Hurricane Arthur's light like the Cubs. They make a little bit of noise before July 4th and nothing <laughs> the rest of the year. Faro with a nice pickup. We've got a lot to talk to. Brad Dean about here, but I've got to start with this crowd. They, they've seen the rain, the wind, they've seen the weather channel all day long, and here they are. You know, they love baseball here, and what's not to love with minor league baseball in Myrtle Beach? you got the beach, golf courses, but baseball is America's pastime, and you see it tonight with so many families coming out. You know, baseball is doing such a good job, I think, especially down at the minor league level of really getting fans back and making the game more fan-friendly as a BB's hit to left field. 
but making the game more fan friendly where you can bring your kids, it's still affordable, and to me, still the most affordable sport of all of the sports right now. Well, that's exactly right. You know, minor league baseball is a lot like Myrtle Beach. It's places you can go, spend a lot of time, and not spend a lot of money. You would think that Myrtle Beach being just a great destination that it would sell itself, but there's a lot of competition for vacation dollars. How do you promote your area? Well, for us, it's real easy. You've got 60 miles of beautiful beaches, 100 championship golf courses, and everything else that makes it fun, whether you're two years old, 82 years old, or somewhere in between. How many golf courses? We've got 103. You could golf every day for three months and not golf the same course twice. Wow. I would like to try that. I'll take that as a challenge. Nicely done defensively for Myrtle Beach. And Winston-Salem leaves a runner on. Go to the bottom of the second. Pelicans lead at 1-0. We'll come back and chat with Brad Dean on the other side of the break. Minor League Baseball on the CBS Sports Network. Back in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, where the homestanding Pelicans lead the dash of Winston-Salem 1-0 here. We're talking with Brad Dean of the uh, Visitors Bureau, and I've got to ask you as well, uh, when you have weather like that, people around here just kind of roll with it, don't they? We, we've really gotten used to it. You know, we get a lot of threats. We haven't had a direct hit in over 20 years. And the great thing is we have so much to do indoors as well as outdoors. People just kind of get used to it and make the best of it. And you're, I tell you, the people around here have been so friendly. And your ticket takers were proudly telling us, we just mentioned this, we're going to have a big crowd tonight. We're like, real? I mean, it was drizzling when they told us that. What is it about the folks down here? Well, you know, I, I think, first of all, everybody loves baseball. And what's not to love here about the Pelicans? They put on a great product on and off the field. They have a great time regardless of the scoreboard. And I think Myrtle Beach is synonymous with fun. People want to come out and have fun. We, uh, here's a shameless plug. I ate at the uh, dinner last night with some friends at the Collector's, Collectors Cafe. Ca Cafe, which Outstanding. Just, it doubles as an art gallery. And it, it was just Almost, it just seemed uniquely Myrtle Beach to me. You know, uh, Tommy Davis, one of the proprietors there, is really an artist at heart. He created the restaurant to help sell his art. You'd think it would be just the other way around. And the food is extraordinary. Oh, yeah. It's an artistic oh, work man. in and of itself. But if you're an art lover, it's a great place to go in Myrtle Beach. And I think that's one of the special things, those independently owned restaurants that have a great menu, an eclectic menu, and you don't find it anywhere else. And we told the girls that waited on us last night, said, watch the game on TV tonight. We'll give you a little <laughs> plug. So, girls, there it is. And we appreciate the service, the food, and certainly the artwork was fantastic. Preston Beck standing in, a Dallas, Texas native. And that's one thing I really like about Myrtle Beach. See if that stays fair. Wind is pushing it. Keenan Walker makes a grab, one out. There are a lot of really unique local places in Myrtle Beach like that, are there not? There are. Myrtle Beach is really an entrepreneurial community, and it wasn't until a few years ago we had a lot of the national change. So you still have a lot of those family-owned businesses, mm -hmm. hotels and restaurants, and people who live here, work here, and the visitors come back and know who they're doing business with. It's got that small-town feel, and yet it's got everything a big city tourism destination could offer. How many people come through Myrtle Beach in terms of the vacationers you know, and tourists? And there's you know? only 28,000 residents in Myrtle Beach, but we'll have 16 million Million visitors wow. this year. <laughs> Do you still have the entertainment like you used to? I know the Gatlin Brothers used to have, be down here in the theater as well as a lot of other entertainers. Does that still go on all year round? We do seven live performance theaters and they bring on Broadway style entertainment, a lot of name entertainment from around the world. And as well, of course, you know, a lot of indoor and outdoor attractions. So uh, whether it's daytime fun on the beach of the golf course or nighttime fun in the nightclubs, always something to do in Myrtle Beach. Chris Grayson standing in now with one out. You mentioned the, the crowd and how much people love baseball. How does this ballpark, how does baseball fit into the overall fabric of this community? I think two things. First of all, uh, you know, in this area, we love college baseball and professional baseball. Of course, you got the Braves not too far away, but the Texas Rangers have a bright future, and they're bringing a lot of people out here. I think the other thing is that Myrtle Beach is synonymous with family fun. Yes. And what yeah. better way for a family to have fun than at the ballpark? Well, there's a family staying in a hotel where we were. Of course, they couldn't go out earlier today. So they set up, the, the people that run the hotel were kind enough to let them do this, set up and they were playing sock baseball in the lobby. <laughs> so they were having a great time today, even though they couldn't go outside for a little while. They may be here tonight. We're right next door to our hotel. Talking with Brad Dean all about the great things in Myrtle Beach. Chris Grayson hammering it, but that's going to go foul. i got to ask you, doing some research, is it true Myrtle Beach is named after a shrub? Myrtle tree. 
And, uh, you know, Myrtle Beach, up until the mid-50s, mid really was just an unknown place. Wasn't yeah. a lot of vacation. They cleared out the beach, uh, but the myrtle trees were there, and that's where they came to name. How about that? And, you uh, know, Myrtle Beach is one of those places, too. When you tell people you go to Myrtle Beach, you never hear anybody go, oh, really? <laughs> you know, everybody's going, they hate you for it. <laughs> and I don't care if the weather's good or bad. They still hate you for coming here because you have such a good reputation of taking care of the people. Listen, the easiest job in the world is to be the Chamber of Commerce in Myrtle Beach, just promoting what we have. <laughs> Off the fists, DeMichael makes it two down. One thing we've seen a lot of the uh, clubs in their towns, they get very active out in the community, and I assume that Pelicans are no different as far as doing things in the community. They are. You can't go to a community event without seeing the Pelicans or their mascot there. The players are great, and you know, that's one other great thing about minor league baseball. Is the kids get to know the players uh, before they get to the major leagues, and this has really become an ingrained part of the community. People here just love the Pelicans because they are part of the Myrtle Beach community. Well, you should be very proud of the way they have made us feel very welcome here. I mean, anything we've wanted, you could feel a sense that something special was happening tonight. Just with, when we walked in, there weren't very many people here, but from all of the people, from vendors to ticket takers to everything, tonight was going to be a special evening. You know, I think Chuck Greenberg and the Pelicans view their business the same way we've used the tourism industry. you got a few hours, maybe a few days, to give people lots of reasons to come back. Christopher Bostic trying to extend the inning for the Pelicans as we talk with Brad Dean, president of the Myrtle Beach oh. Chamber of Commerce. And, again, just a great crowd here at this ballpark and in a wonderful part of the country. And as we said, it kind of sells itself, but word of mouth is big too, isn't it? It is, and a lot of people come back every year after yep. because they have such a great time. And listen, looking at uh, the players on the field, we know the Texas Rangers have a bright future. You bet. A lot of reason to continue to follow them. Well, we couldn't wait to see Alfaro behind the plate. And that hammer to center field. Jacob May watches a drop in front of him, base hit. Second hit of the night for the Pelicans. A home run now, a single. Man on with two outs. You know, we've talked often, Dick, about pulling off the ball, and when you stay on, a lot more hits come off those handles than they do off the end of the bat, and that time you got a little jam shot out to center field and out in the no man. That's when you're going good, which I wouldn't know a whole lot about, <laughs> but that's when you're going good. Well, he used every bit of strength he had to dump it in there, and now Kevin Torres will stand in from the left side. We've noticed too, Brad, there's a lot of, uh, when you talk about the development of the young players that are coming up through this system, it's getting back to old school baseball where my clubs that know that if they're gonna be successful have to start developing with, from within. Free agency's taking it to a level that is awfully expensive, so you better start developing your own players, and we've seen that with a lot of the organizations. Oh, of course, and, and no reason to think that that's gonna stop here. There's some talented players out there tonight, and of course, uh, now there's a direct connection between Frisco and the Myrtle Beach Club, mm -hmm. same ownership, so uh, we start to see that pipeline going back and forth. We're hoping a lot of visitors will come here to see those players before they make it to Texas. Fourth of July weekend, I've gotta think this is huge for your town. This is one of the busiest weekends of the year, and South Carolina is one of the most patriotic states in the country. Uh, you'll see a lot of folks wearing their red, white, and blue out here tonight and tomorrow. South Carolina pivotal in both the Revolutionary War and the Civil War. A lot well, of history in this state. Yeah. We're talking with Joe McCulloch before the game, and here's a guy that spent 31 years in the minor leagues, never got a taste of the big leagues, and has dedicated his life to developing young men that will go and make millions of dollars. And when I look at the things that he's doing and all the other coaches in the minor league system, I have such respect because they helped mold me and gave me an opportunity to get to the big leagues, and I know these players appreciate that as well. And Joe's views his job is not only to teach them baseball, but how to teach them to be young men yeah. and good character building, and that's important in baseball. Absolutely. Too. Absolutely. Big pitch, 2-1. Now goes the 3-1. Some of these players have come from low A, come from rookie ball. Some, this is their first stop. First time away from home, first time with a little bit of money, not a lot. So there's a lot to learn. And can you imagine this first job, the Myrtle Beach? I mean, you got to keep your, you got to keep your focus on the field. That's exactly right. You know, some of these guys, if they're not careful, they'll be spending more time on the golf course than the ball field. I know the guy to my right would. Is Kevin, that wrong? <laughs> Kevin Is Torres wrong? draws the walk. Well, he's right. I started off my first year was in Tampa, Florida, which is a pretty good town too, and got a chance to play cla Class A ball there, but. If we've seen going around the country now, the stadiums are so much bigger, better, and nicer. And, and hats off to the effort that's been put into minor league baseball and to you in this city for sticking behind them 
Uh, I'm a little prejudiced, obviously, but I still think we have a minor league ball club in our hometown of Lexington, Kentucky. Drill to center field. Jacob May tracks it, squeezes, and a thrill for the fans, but that's out number three. Brad, thank you so much for having Guys, us. Guys, enjoy your time in Myrtle Beach. We thank will. you, Brad. Appreciate it, Hope buddy. Hope to see you again soon. The Pelican Strand 2 will go to the third. Myrtle Beach 1, Winston-Salem nothing on the Minor League Baseball Game of the Week. Back in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, Dick Gabriel, Doug Flynn, Lauren Gardner. Be sure you're with us next Thursday, July 10th. We're going to head to Ohio where the South Bend Silverhawks, the Diamondbacks affiliate, travel to Dayton to take on the Dragons, the Cincinnati Reds affiliate. It's the Minor League Baseball Game of the Week, 7 p.m. Eastern on CBS Sports Network. You will now refer to me as D-Fly. D-Fly, well, that's what our producer, AJ, is calling I it, like so. it, and I think it should stick. Yeah, I think so. Can you imagine if they called you that when you were playing in New York with the Mets? You might still be there. You yeah, but it wouldn't have made sense then. You would have owned so. Have you ever made sense? No, but back in those days, <laughs> at least you got a reference. And back then, the deep fly would not have fit. Grant Buckner to lead things off for the dash, trailing at one nothing here in the third inning. Both pitchers have been efficient, and a nice pickup by Mendez. Boy, smooth. That's one reason Parr has been efficient. Good defense behind him. Outstanding. And Joe Micklick was saying these guys know how to play the game. You watch him sit here, gets his feet set. Boy, he has this ball red all the way. Gets up. Nice release. Made it look routine. Well, he kept his head up and his back straight, so when he got to his feet, he was ready. Now Clay Luis Rondon. Batting in a nine hole for the dash of Winston-Salem. That's hammered down the left field line, and that is a fair ball. Into the corner it goes. Williams chases it down. Run done easily into second base with a double. Winston-Salem with its second base hit. First time with a man in scoring position. One out. And that ball was roped. Got a fastball. Looks like on the inner half of the oh. plate and just hammers it. Belt high. Top of the order now, Jacob May. Fly ball to right his last time up. May played his college baseball. How about this? Coastal Carolina, right down the road. Always had a good program. Outstanding program. Has hosted several NCAA regionals. Hey, you think they got a pretty good hitting coach over on that Winston-Salem team right now? Mr. Gary Ward. Oh, my gosh. Had a great career in the big leagues. Play for the Twins and the Rangers, the Yankees and Tigers. Rookie of the year. 1981. Twins player of the year the following year. Two-time All-Star. Yeah, he knows a little bit. I mentioned Mays had that hot streak, including last night's leadoff home run. From Liberty Township, Ohio, originally drafted out of high school by the Reds. In the 39th round, so he went on to college and worked out for him. A third round pick. Last year out of Coastal by the White Sox. Well, I tell you, that high school he went to has put out some pretty good ball players. Lakota West and some good, or rather, uh, yeah, in uh, Westchester, Ohio. Yeah. And has put out some pretty good football players, too. That's exactly right. Really tore up the Pioneer League and Low A Kannapolis last year. Hit 303. South Atlantic League. And you know, that's been a pitcher's league for quite a few years so when you hit 300 in that league you've done pretty well in your first year hitters count now for a real hitter this past Saturday May with a career high four hits stretched that hitting streak to eight games we've already talked about his speed so it's going to be interesting if he gets on the base, no, he's going to be going. That's a challenge. Well, he's on base with a man ahead of him. First and second one out now. Jacob May in this hitting streak is batting near 500. So now Keenan Walker steps up. Another switch hitter. Uh, 
out of Central Arizona Community College. There you see Alfaro flashing signs. 6-3-190. Strikeout victim was last time up. Drafted originally by the Cubs in 09, 16th round. Dick, we're seeing a lot of these players drafted out of high school but chose to go on to college for a year or two to refine their game, mature a little bit. And that's a tough call. We've talked about it before. That's a very tough decision to have to be made by a young kid and his family. Well, Walker was one of them drafted in the 16th round at a high school in Salt Lake City, Judge Memorial Catholic. They're going to try for two. Too much speed for Walker. So runners at the corners now. Well, now they're going to call him out. Well, they're going to they're say his runner's interference at sure second did. base. He absolutely did. Interference sets the call by Eric Bacchus at second base. And he's going to get an earful from Tommy Thompson, the manager. Take well, another look. Well, a good job right there. Torres getting the ball at those. Yep. I'd say that one was probably. We've had two of those this year. That one right there looked like there's not a lot of argument. Well, back in the day, they let that go, but they're cracking down on sliding out of the base path, and that's what the call was. Myrtle Beach leads at 1-0. Minor League Baseball on CBS Sports Network. Back in Myrtle Beach where the crowd is enjoying the T-shirts and other souvenirs being tossed into the stands. And they just saw an interesting call at second base. I tell you, Dick, I think it's the right call for one reason. Watch the runner. He slides away. There's no way he can reach the bag with his hand. If he slides on his left leg, then he has a chance to touch the bag. So that's why they call that. And on the double play, he kind of like work people. out of the inning. Two bites of people up here in the booth with Listen us. Listen to this crowd here in Myrtle Beach. Folks, that's just for a pizza. Wait till they give away the car. See a lot of the stars and stripes here on the July 4th weekend. And if you're just joining us, and we appreciate it, you know there's been a hurricane lurking off the east coast in the southeast part of the country, and we got a little bit of that earlier today. But that did not deter the baseball fans here at this beautiful ballpark at TicketReturn.com Field, Pelicans Park. And just as Winston-Salem jumped out on a home run last night, so have the Pelicans done the same tonight. Top of the order, Chris Garia popped out the short and foul ground his last time up. Here's another kid that can run. Has a lot of triples this year, I think close to 11. So that shows you if he hits the ball in the gap, he can fly. And the dimensions here in right field are a little bit deeper. Left field, just 308. Finds right center, cut off by Jacob May. Base hit number three on the night for the Pelicans, leadoff man aboard. I started talking early about Joe Mikulik said this ball club just knows how to play the game. And what he's trying to teach him is not to be selfish. He said it's so easy now to just want to play for yourself so you can move up. He said, no, if you're going to play for me, you're going to learn to be a team player. You're going to pull for the other guy and you're going to learn to play the game the right way. You look at Chris Garia at first base. The switch hitter finds his way on. Alberto popped out to short as well. His first at bat. Boy, how good has he looked at shortstop? Talented player. Driven in 43 runs on the year. Ballpark power. Pelicans have been a Rangers affiliate since 2011. Prior to that, for 12 years, affiliated with the Atlanta Braves. Saw a couple of numbers that they had retired here. Bruce Del Canton, yep. great right-handed pitcher, and uh, Rafi for calls number. 
had been retired here at this ballpark. Now, Ken passed away about six years ago. Well, what a good man. Yes. Had the chance to meet him several times and just an outstanding gentleman. And they've got their eye obviously on Garia. Alberto will try to bring him around out of the Dominican Republic after the 2012 season ranked 15th in the Rangers chain among prospects. Alberto split time last year between Myrtle Beach which is high class A and Frisco of double A. does not appreciate the delay and they know the same thing that we have been talking about that this kid can run you can't blame Mendelkin trying to keep him close you can see he's got a good lead pass Buckner for a base hit yeah that was going to be a tough play he tried to come in and short hop it but that had ugly written all over it as soon as the ball was hit. Now Nick Williams, and this is what he did last time up. Got it up in the jet stream the other way, left the ballpark in a hurry. He's the reason Myrtle Beach leads it 1-0. Out of Galveston, Texas, Ball High School. Taking second round, 93rd overall two years ago. Let's go downstairs to Lauren Gardner. Lauren. Well, guys, you know, despite the inclement weather brought here to Myrtle Beach by Hurricane Arthur, this is the destination road city in the Carolina League. In fact, I was chatting with some of the Winston-Salem players who said, not only do we look forward to coming to Myrtle Beach to hang out and have fun in our downtime, but how about this? We get to have some of our workouts on the beach. Their strength and conditioning coach, Raymond Smith, will set up some team workouts out on the beach. He said, you know, there are some restrictions. They obviously can't stay out in the sun for very long, but they said, we really enjoy coming here. I mean, Doug, could you imagine playing right here? Yes, I, I could. I, <laughs> she meant playing baseball, not golf. Oh, I see. No, I think that's great, Lauren. That, that is a good piece of news, man, to be able to go out to the beach and enjoy a little bit of it. That'd be great if after your workout you can jump in the ocean. Exactly. The Jacob end. May. He'll hold the runner at third. Second base hitter tonight for Williams. The sacks are full of Pelicans. Caught that ball off the end of the bat, Dick, and just served it out. Boy, look, he gets that foot down in plenty of time. For a hitter that raises a foot up as high as he does, that's a timing mechanism. It's very important that he get it down on the ground, and he did that off the end of the bat a little bit, but perfect placement. No sense gambling with Garia at third. Nobody out. What an opportunity for Jorge Alfaro. Talented young catcher. Chance to break this game open early. Nice pick and block by Narvaez. You know, you don't see a lot of guys in the minor leagues that already have one nickname, let alone several. Well, and one of them's the legend. I mean, come on. <laughs> the legend, the bear. You know, right now he does throw well, but the one thing he is learning is they hit a lot of bears and several pass balls. So, as you said, he played some third base and now behind the dish. And he hit him. So Wendelka tries to work inside and just nicks Alfaro. Take another look. Well, it doesn't get much of him, but it doesn't. Just enough. Doesn't have to. An RBI and a 2 0 lead. I thought Alfaro did a great job of just holding his ground there. It looked like the ball was dropping anyway. He didn't, I think he was a little surprised it hit him. 
Yeah, because he wants to swing the bat oh, in this yeah. situation. Here's a pitch. He just drops his elbow, so he's really not trying to get out of the way, but because he, he's got that pad on his elbow. He gets one RBI instead of maybe three. So when Delkin retires five of the first six, did give up the home run in the first. But the Pelicans are roughing him up here in the third. Now Preston Beck. Bases loaded. Nobody out. Beck played his college ball at UT Arlington. Dallas native, 6'2", 190. Second season with the Pelicans. Drafted in the fifth round two years ago. There's the pop of that mitt that we haven't heard since the first inning. Yep, good fastball and good location on that one too. Pitches where he's getting hurt, he's up in the zone. I mean, you hear that over and over and over, but it's true. You try to stay down in that zone and get ground balls if you can, especially in this situation. Could be two. DeMichael, Rondon, they can't make it happen at first. Another run scores for Myrtle Beach. So make it a three nothing game. Take another look. Yep. Gives a good throw and just it was a good try. That was just going to be very tough. The ball wasn't hit very hard. Actually, you got to give Barnum credit for keeping the baseball in play. Yeah, if the ball goes off the mark that way, first baseman sometimes have a tendency to try to stretch instead of going over to knock it down. He did a good job, as you say, Dick, of knocking that ball down. So now Williams a third as Alberto comes in to score. Chris Grayson steps in, bounced to second his last time up. You know, we've talked a lot about Alfaro's arm. Beck, who's at first base now, had a dozen assists last year, two years ago. 13 last year from the outfield. Good night. Here in Myrtle Beach. Hawk. Boy, staying right around that 89, 91 mile an hour. Talking to Brian Bush, the fine play-by-play -play man for Winston-Salem, he told us that when Delkin, when he's on, is very tough to hit. But he's let the ball up and out over the plate more than once tonight. You've seen what's happened. And you're playing against a pretty good minor league ball club, too. This team in first place, 52 and 29 the first half, 8 and 5 the second half, but just a nice, solid ball club. Grayson from Monroe, Louisiana, out of Lee College, 13th round pick three years ago. And in fact, Lee College that year had four players drafted. Sally League All Star in 2012 down in Hickory. He's got some speed. Jacob May, that'll score a run. So an RBI on the sack fly for Grayson. It's a four-nothing game. Doing just what he needed to do. Got a ball that he could drive, hit it to the outfield. Easy RBI there. And celebrates with his teammates in the dugout. So now two outs for Christopher Bostic. And I got to say, if when Delkin can get out of this inning now, after starting with bases loaded, nobody out, not too bad. Double play would have helped. Well, he's still throwing the ball well. It's just been his location tonight, the fact that he hadn't been able to throw the off speed pitch over. And some of the base hits that the Pelicans have have not been hit very hard. Bostic from Rochester, New York. Originally drafted out of Aquinas Institute in the 44th round by the Oakland A's. They traded him to the Rangers 
last year. In fact, at the end of last season. Hey, saw an old buddy of mine, roving hitting instructor for this Pelican Ball Club and for the organization, Harry Spillman, who was a Cincinnati Red, Houston yep. Astro, an outstanding hitter. Solid big leaguer. Sure was. Harry and I go back to 1973. Wow. He's a little younger than me, though. <laughs> you weren't even a hubcap on the big red machine back then. No, I wasn't even thought about. I don't think I was thought about in 75 when I made the team. It just things happened to fall well. into place. Keeping that dream alive, and that's what we're watching tonight. You executed in the minors, tore it up in spring training, and got your chance. Jacob May, a busy man. He just missed that ball. He did indeed. Pelicans push across three more. We'll go to the fourth. Myrtle Beach four. Winston-Salem nothing. Minor League Baseball Game of the Week on the CBS Sports Network. Back in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, Dick Gabriel, Doug Flynn, Lauren Gardner. The Pelicans lead it 4-0, and as we've mentioned this evening, the Pelicans part of the Texas Rangers organization. And Mike Daly in the booth with us now, the director of the uh, farm system for the Rangers. And first of all, welcome. You've got an ex-Ranger next to you. you got a guy <laughs> who used to go to Ranger games when I lived in Texas. So you got a good thing going, but you've got some good young talent out here. No, thank you very much. I think it's a credit to our scouting staff for uh, going out and identifying the talent, bringing it into the system, and then a real nice job by our coaches, our minor league coaches, to uh, you know, take that talent and you know, develop them. And then it's a huge credit to the players. You know, they're always giving their you know, effort each and every day, and they're the ones who are you know, performing out here. So. It's, it's you know, very nice to hear. Mike, were you getting a little static today in the locker room when I was in there earlier? It's a little bit. You know, you know. I mean, everybody's <laughs> waiting out there. Hey, a rain delay. You, you know, watching the weather channel. You got the hurricane coming. So you know, <laughs> minor league baseball special. I, I, we have had a ball as we continue to go around the country, but there's something special about it, and you get to see it firsthand of all this young talent developing. Not only as ball players, but as young men, that's got to be so rewarding. No, absolutely, and I think it's just like a ton of work by our, you know, people, by our, you know, coaches, by the, the scouts. You know, and I just continue to kind of talk about it because it really is a, a group effort amongst like the scouting department and the player development department because you know there's so much time you know put into the players. Line shot by DeMichael, but right at Kevin Torres, one out. And then to be able to see them, you know, perform on the field and to see them, you know, continue to grow, you know, when they come in, you know, baby face at 18 years old and then to see them at 20, 21, and then hopefully when they make their way to Arlington here. Absolutely. I got to ask you about the young man behind the plate, Alfaro. Tell me a little bit about you paid him a lot of money, 1.3 million. You moved him from third base behind the plate, but with that arm, who can blame you? It's uh, a... <laughs> The arm is special. I yeah. mean, it is a you know unbelievable weapon that he has back there, and he's really grown as a as a catcher. You know, he wasn't a catcher as we signed him, as, as you mentioned. And there's a there's a lot to learn. There's a lot that goes into being a uh, a major league catcher, and he's put in a ton of work. And uh, Hector Ortiz and Riley Westman, who are two of our catching coordinators, have worked you know tirelessly with him. But I tell you what, he continues to develop, and we're very excited about where he's at. Did you, you guys have to sell him on that? You know, he actually did that as, as a tryout player. He was originally a shortstop and a third baseman, and just before he signed, he started to uh, get behind home plate. So we signed him just as he had converted to a catcher, and uh, his development has been really good. He's you know, going to Minneapolis for the Futures game here yep. in about 10 days, and, uh, yeah, it's been you know really special, and uh, he's we're very happy where fun. he's at right now. I tell you, with all the injuries that have happened, how has that affected your minor league system because it's – I mean, that's a part of the game, but boy, this year it's kind of hit you guys pretty good. It's the yeah, the injury bug has definitely hit us hard, but uh, I think what's great about, um, you know, what's been great on the minor league side is it's given opportunities mm. to players to, you know, to get to the major leagues. And if you would have been here, you know, one year ago, you know, Luis Sardinas was playing short and Rugnan Odor was playing second and Nick Martinez was on the mound, and now yep. all three of those guys are in the major leagues, you know, you know one, one year later. So... You know, you never want to see Prince Fielder get hurt or Martin Perez get hurt. You wish that they were playing 
at the major leagues, you know, helping us win, but it's also provided a great opportunity for some of our minor league guys to get up there. And you don't have Jim Sundberg working with the catcher? What's going on? Is he, is he so old now that he just can't squat down? <laughs> no. What's the deal? No, Sonny's great. Sonny's great. Sonny, you know, comes down to the Dominican, you know, every January, works with the catchers, works with the catchers in a spring training. Uh, he's got, a, like, a ton of knowledge. You know, I mean, he still holds record of 155 games caught in a season, which is amazing, amazing. and uh, has a ton of knowledge. and. What do you win? Ten Gold Gloves, something like that. I think it was eight or nine, yeah. eight, you know, something like that. You played in you know, three All Stars, was a yeah. World Champion. Just on that. quality people. Just he's one of the best people that I had a chance to be around. Of course, when I was there, it was for a short period of time. Don Zimmer was the manager. Sure. Danny Darwin was there. And Tanana, just a good bunch of folks on that ball club. No, Jason absolutely. Coach draws the walk, and now Keon Barnum steps in. No, Jim Sumberg you know, is going to just uh, announce yesterday that he's going to retire at. at, at at the end of the year, he's been a true ranger, you know, through and through. He's yeah. done just about everything in the organization. He's still going to be working on a part-time uh, capacity, but he's a great guy. He's very supportive of our efforts on the minor league side. So We've talked to Brad Dean earlier with the Chamber of Commerce from Myrtle Beach, and you guys have been affiliated with Myrtle Beach now for a few years. What has that meant to your farm system? It's been tremendous. It's been a great partnership over the last uh, four years. You know, 2011 it was our uh, first year in here. You know, Chuck Greenberg and his ownership group. Their vision here of you know, putting together you know, the, the Myrtle Beach Pelicans has been tremendous. You know, Chuck just purchased the uh, our AA yep. affiliate, him and his investors. So it's been a great partnership with us here in Myrtle. It's going to be a great partnership in, uh, in Frisco as well. So our players love it. It's a you know, great place for pitchers. It's a great place to learn how to hit. Our staff you know, certainly loves it as well. well Speaking of pitchers, this young man's got a bright future. Uh, absolutely, you know, Luis Parr from the Dominican Republic. When we signed him, he was about 150 pounds. His, <laughs> and his, uh, he's just really developed and, you know, come along. And nice breaking ball in the dirt there. And that's strike three, two down now. What do you feed him when you get a young man who, who comes in weighing 150? I tell you, uh, they the feed him more than they fed us. Is, that's is the answer everything? Everything, yeah. You know, see it and eat it. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but no, you've got nutritionists to work with them, I know. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we do. Uh, we try to do everything possible to help the players. You know, develop, put them in the best opportunity, give them the best opportunity to, you know, develop into, to a major league players. And uh, I mean, Louis done a real nice job and continues to take steps. Another good breaking ball. He's around the plate quite a bit, and he throws a lot of strikes. Yeah, he absolutely does. I mean, you know, he's mixing the pitch as well. He's throwing all three, you know, fastball, breaking ball, and, and change up for a strike. He's worked real hard with us, Steve Mintz, who's our, you know, pitching coach. Sure. And uh, he's been real consistent. So I know these guys are hungry. You know, we won the first half here. It was a great job by the players, and they're hungry to, you know, continue to uh, – you know, win games and hopefully win the second so half you, as well. Are you going to let Joe coach and manage the second half, or are you going to let him run off and get married first? Because <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I don't want to touch that there right now. I don't want to touch. I've learned no. long ago, don't well, get involved with that one. But I what does a guy a, like that don't mean to your organization? I mean, he's a baseball lifer in his fourth decade now of working with young people. We're very lucky to have Joe Mickley as our manager. Yeah. I mean, 15 years experience at the minor league level, a you know, longtime manager there in Asheville and the Rockies organization. Um, played 11 years. Play, yeah, I mean, yep. he's done everything. Played in Mexico. He's he's a ranger, and uh, we're very lucky to have him. I know that these players, are, you know, really play hard for him. They've well, learned a ton, and it's, uh, well, it's like Doug. Been great. He was telling Doug and me earlier. He said he said you know when, when you you swing at that pitch in the dirt that you don't want to swing at or you're jammed or whatever. He's, he said I, I I've been there a hundred thousand times. Sure. So they know that. Absolutely. He's a he, he's a teacher first. Yeah. And he holds the kids accountable. He holds the guys. You know, he pushes them. He wants the best for him, and uh, he's done a tremendous job. And Very honestly, impressed with him. Absolutely. And he is getting married, by the way, so I didn't just throw that in there. <laughs> no. He, but he is, he's going to wait if, after the playoffs and then go, and even maybe you get another one getting married, too. A quick story. Before Joe took the job, like, I was like, hey, Candy is his, you know, fiance. I'm like, hey, make sure that Candy's okay with it. We need to send her flowers. <laughs> Whatever we need to do to make sure that Candy is, you know, good, for, you know, good with it, we will do. Ball four, two runners on again for Winston-Salem. Now the dash threatening again. They did so back in the third, but the interference call helped the Pelicans wriggle off the hook. 
Now that can walk by para. Catch and rule hasn't really got to the minor leagues, has it? Or is it still supposed to be applied like it is in the big leagues? Uh, you mean you know, the blocking, blocking the, play? the plate? No, that's something that's you know throughout the uh, throughout like the big leagues and the minor leagues. That was something that we you know worked on there. And uh, at the end of spring training, when the rule came out, Hector Ortiz and uh, Ivan Rodriguez, Benji Molina, who's our sure. uh, our major league catching coach, everybody got together and uh, came up with our way of you know teaching it. But you know blocking the well, we've noticed at second base, they've called that play twice that we've seen. Yeah. We rarely used to see that at all, but it seems like a point of emphasis. Mike, thank you so much for joining hey, us. Hey, thanks a lot, guys. Really appreciate, appreciate it. Mike. Best of thank luck you, to you and the Rangers. Mike Daly from the Texas Rangers. And once again, the Pelicans work out of a jam. 4 nothing Myrtle Beach on the CBS Sports Network. Back in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, it's turned into a gorgeous evening, hurricane or no hurricane. Pelicans lead it 4 nothing. Dick Gabriel, Doug Flynn, and let's go back downstairs to our roving reporter, Lauren Gardner. Well, guys, it's practically heaven here, and you know what? I am in heaven. It's called a hops heaven over here in right field. The Pelicans grow their own hops for a very special limited beer, and it's called the Pelican Tide, the Pelican Summer Tide indeed. Now, every year it's different. This year it's a lager, and as you can see, there aren't a lot here, so it only yields a few kegs, so it's limited edition. You guys can come over and buy a glass, but it's exclusive to the ballpark. How cool is that? They grow their own hops here. I, I don't even know where I would start. <laughs> How do you well, even do it, that? It starts, I didn't know you even could do that. It starts with hops. Exactly. <laughs> That's I thought Lauren. they just came from the K. <laughs> <laughs> and Lauren, how is that? You know what? Homegrown lager. It's very I tasty. I knew you knew. Uh -huh. That's right. That's our girl. She's Can't out there. Can't believe you had me confess. <laughs> <laughs> you, you would expect nothing less. You know, we've talked so much in our travels about the concessions and so many unique elements to all the minor league ballparks that's a first for me oh i agree growing your own hops here in the ballpark yep. is fantastic and when lauren was doing her research she was so excited to learn that hops heaven was right here in myrtle beach south carolina and they've also got some other concession items we'll tell you uh, tell you about a little bit later on and now some of that grill smoke is making its way around the ballpark, mm. making you very, very hungry. Yes, it is. Kevin Torres drew a walk his last time up. Stands in here in the fourth inning. Myrtle Beach jumped out with a home run in the first, crooked number in the third. Three runs made it 4 nothing. Torres, a native of Puerto Rico, played his college ball at Pepperdine. Drafted by the Rangers in the 45th round in 08. Well, we talked about the injury bug that had hit a few teams, and even though it's part of the game, I don't think anybody's been hit as hard as Texas. But that's when you have to go to your minor league system and find some kids, and he's right. It opens up the door for a lot of people to move up the ladder a little bit quicker. Good fastball right here on the outside part of the plate. Just beats him. Two balls, two strikes. Right back with it. First, rather second strike out of the night by Wendelkin. And he froze him. Well, good job of framing behind the plate that time. And that's what you want in a catcher, somebody you got confidence with. If you're off the plate an inch or so, he knows how to get that ball and make it look like a strike. Luis Mendez, another switch hitter in the Myrtle Beach lineup. Fly ball to center his last time up. Native of Venezuela, but played his high school baseball in Houston at Bel Air High School. Born on New Year's Day, 1993. Sanchez 5'9, 155. Made a terrific pickup down at third earlier tonight. I had an opportunity of going to that. At the time, a very nice place to go play baseball in Venezuela. Played in Maracay, home of David Concepcion. <laughs> Spent Christmas on the beach. That didn't quite feel right. <laughs> 
And another man goes down. And both caught looking. Yep. That pitch comes back across the plate, and he knows it's a strike. Not much argument there. You know, that's a pitch that is relatively new in baseball. Got started by Greg Maddox, is being able to turn that fastball and move it on a left-hander if you're a right-hander back across the plate. Maddox could do it with such efficiency. Better than anyone when he was playing. Absolutely. Top of the order, Chris Garia. Singled, scored a run back in the third. One for two on the night. Boy, nice little rhythm when Delkin is in now. Just thinking that. And you can see he looks loose and relaxed, not trying to overthrow, paint the outside corner. Rip, but right at Keon Barnum in a good inning for Winston-Salem. First perfect inning spun by J.B. Wendelkin. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth. 4-0 Four Myrtle Beach. Top of the fifth inning in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, where the Pelicans lead the dash 4-0. Dick Gabriel, Doug Flynn. Go back downstairs to Lauren Gardner. Lauren. Well, Dick, the Pelicans added a new addition to their staff and assistant coach Ryan Leak. And you know that name might sound familiar. He's the older brother of Mike Leak, a starting pitcher for the Cincinnati Reds. The two grew up very close as young kids and played backyard ball all the time with their parents. In fact, Mike Leak attributes a lot of his success in baseball to his brother Ryan, saying he was always there to help me and encourage me. And he he said, you know, when I was in high school, I was down on myself, and he really helped me with my self-confidence. I spoke with Mike earlier today, and he said his brother wrote him a one-page note in high school, basically telling him to stop being a baby and to believe <laughs> in himself, and he has a tattoo about that. And when I chatted with Ryan earlier today, is the brotherhood. He says, I am more of a big brother to these guys than I am a coach. So a great relationship between Ryan and Mike, and of course a great relationship that Ryan has established with all of his players. And it's something he can point to and say, one of my earlier pupils is now pitching in the major leagues and very well. I tell you what, little Mike Leak is a gamer, but he's not the biggest kid to ever play the game, and neither is his brother, but you talk about competitive spirit and competitive heart and good athletes. Well, this is a young man who does have some size to him. Grant Buckner, 6'2", 225. From Charleston, West Virginia, and the product of West Virginia University. White Sox took him in the 26th round out of WVU in 2011. On the Big East batting crown in his last year with the Mountaineers, batted 437. Hung up on that pitch. Now Faro with a laser to first. One out. Now Clay Luis Rondon doubled his last time up. Down the left field line. Dick, we had a chance to see a few minutes ago one thing they do at several of the ballparks, but especially this close to the 4th of July, have all the servicemen and women stand up and yep. give them a nice round of applause. And I think every major league ballpark is doing the same thing. And uh, makes you proud to sit here and watch that. And all these wonderful people that tell you what, people in the military, they get a lot of ball games over on those when they're serving time. So they get a chance now to come back. It's outstanding. A lot of uh, retired military in this part of the country. Yep. We were up in Charleston last week where the military is so prevalent. Nice pitch by Parra, jammed run. You might wonder about the nickname of the dash. The Pelicans, well, that's fairly I'm obvious. wondering. I'm an inquiring mind. Could you help me, please? I knew I, I can. I'm here for you. Thank you. Winston dash Salem. Uh-uh. That's just that simple. No way. That's it. Another unique nickname. And, in fact, in 1995, they were called the Warthogs. It had been a number of names up to that point. So the team had a contest in an 08 of December announced. Actually, they changed to the Warthogs in 95. And in 08, they had a contest and announced it would be the Dash. And all the Warthogs got together and protested. Evidently. 
And they changed it to the dash. We have seen some interesting names on our journey this yeah. year. We've not yet made it to El Paso to see the Chihuahuas. But we have That's seen the true. isotopes. That'll stay in the infield. Christopher Bostic makes it two out. Well, I am glad you clarified that because my good friend Greg Bibb asked me what the dash meant. And glad I said, I don't know, and uh, I will find out. <laughs> I got out. a guy. I got a guy, and he will find out. There you go. This uh, franchise for Winston-Salem goes back in the Carolina League in 1945 and is the oldest continuously operating team in this league, originally a Cardinals affiliate. And then in 61, switched to Red Sox for 22 years. In 84, was part of the Cubs organization. 1993, part of the Reds affiliation. 97, joined the White Sox. Wow. How would you not want to have a franchise here? Well, a great ballpark and a lot of baseball fans. Isn't this amazing? We were thinking with the weather like it is, but shoot. It's almost a full house. And we were told by the people at the hotel where we were staying, it's out of here, don't worry about it, go and enjoy yourself. And they were absolutely correct. Jacob May trying to fight his way on with two out. Foul ball. May drew a walk back in the third inning. In fact, he was the guilty party sliding. There you see the dirt on his right side. Called for interference on the slide at second, as Doug pointed out. If he slides with his left leg, perhaps he's not called out on interference. The rules say you have to be able to touch the bag. With your back to the bag and that far out of bounds, I just don't think there was any way that they couldn't call that. And they're trying to protect players a little more as we know they got the blocking the plate rule has changed. Well, and you don't like that rule. You're old school and uh, you, you told me you're just not crazy about the block the plate, but isn't the rule that they caught where they caught Jacob May, that's, that's to protect your guys, the middle infielders. Well, that was my next question. If you're gonna do that to protect the catchers, are you gonna do something to protect the infielders too? Well, and, and uh, that rule has, I've got to think, helped a little bit. Well, yeah, but, you know, as we watch a lot of college baseball games, good breaking ball right there. We'll come back to the topic. But right now, three up, three down, two strikeouts in the inning for Luis Parra. As we go to the break, take a look at the gorgeous boardwalk here in Myrtle Beach. 4 nothing Pelicans, minor league baseball game of the week, CBS Sports Network. Back in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, where the Pelicans lead the dash 4-0. Dick Gabriel, Doug Flynn, hello there. Well, and you, goodbye to Arthur. Let's go back downstairs to Lauren Gardner. Lauren? Well, Dick, you were right. The dash is the hyphen between Winston and Salem, but it's a little bit more than that. It symbolizes Winston and Salem coming together 101 years ago, and when they switched ballparks, they wanted that to basically bring everybody together. So it's, it's very symbolic, and it's tough to understand, but we were able to get a little bit more of the meaning behind it. So hopefully that clarifies a few things. Yeah, hey. and it's got to be the only ball the only team in all of pro sports named after a punctuation mark. Yeah, really. A plethora of knowledge. There you go. Thank you, Lauren. Now Myrtle Beach will try to extend this 4 nothing lead with Hanser Alberto standing in. Single score to run back in the third inning. Came around on a fielder's choice, and he drills it to right, but Jason Coates tracking and squeezing one down. Had the opportunity to visit Winston-Salem some years ago, cover a little college basketball down there at Wake Forest University. Very nice town. Now Nick Williams, he likewise singled score to run back in the third. And in the first inning, drilled one that nearly left the entire ballpark and hit the top row of the left field bleachers.
Galveston Texas native. Now you were talking about Joe Micklock the manager for Myrtle Beach. He's a Texas native and as yeah, Mike right. Daly said he is a Ranger right outside of Austin. Yep. Where a lot of our crew are from back he played two years of junior college ball at San Jacinto Junior College. Jacinto was an All-American there. And, uh, turned down a scholarship offer from Texas A&M to go play for the Houston Astros who took him ninth in 1984. The ninth round I should say. Williams finds his way on. Joe got all the way up to Triple A baseball. Was part of a couple of PCL championship teams. Never quite made it to the show, but he was a baseball lifer, three-time Sally Manager of the Year, member of the South Atlantic Hall of Fame, as is my broadcast partner. Hit and run for Jorge Alfaro. Got a little lead, a little. Offensive baseball going on. I don't know what's going on. A little discussion at home plate. Alfaro hit by a pitch with the bases loaded last time up. Drove in a run. Dash playing Alfaro to pull, but straight away in right field. So if he can go the other way with it, huge hole in right center. There you see the defensive alignment. Flag still pulling hard towards left field. Hasn't really stopped all night, has it? No. No chance for two. Nice pick up and throw by Grant Buckner. Two out. Williams safe to second. Well, you're exactly right, Dick. That was a nice play. Off speed pitch. Had Alfaro out in front of it. You can see he's down and he just lucky to make contact. Nice charging play right there by Buckner. And a good pick at first base. Boy, when you got a guy at first that can make that kind of play for you, whoo, close to. Good hustle down the line. Now Preston Beck. Ground ball his last time up. A fly ball in the second inning. Oh. Going out is Michael. Coming in is Coates. And it'll be Coates who steps in front. <laughs> and the taller the man makes the play. <laughs> <laughs> so the Pelican strand a runner will go to the sixth. Myrtle Beach 4, Winston-Salem nothing on the CBS Sports Network. The boardwalk in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, just one of several tourist attractions down here. And in Myrtle Beach, they play pretty good baseball here at TicketReturn.com Field, Pelicans Park. Dick Gabriel, Doug Flynn, Lauren Gardner were joined by Andy Milovich, the general manager of the Pelicans. I got to tell you, we are so impressed by your employees, by your ballpark, but your fans said, we don't, what hurricane? We're coming to the ballpark. And they did. Yeah, it's really amazing. Uh, we've got such a great group of uh, local fans. And then to have the tourism folks that come out here and support us, they're here on vacation. They're here to have a good time and uh, they get into the ball game. It's a lot of fun. All right, Andy, tell me, GM of the ball club, how many hats do you really wear? Well, you juggle a lot of things. Today it was mostly uh, groundskeeper and uh, weather <laughs> forecast. You pulled the tarp, didn't you? You were down there. I was you? down there, yes. Yeah. We, we, uh, we've talked about that once before. I said, just because you are the general manager, there are so many things you're going to do. And don't be surprised if you see the GM on the field pulling a tarp. And sure enough, there you were. Yeah, the uh, the big leagues, you uh, you specialize in. You're a power hitter, you're a base stealer, and down here, you're a utility guy for sure. <laughs> well, we saw the same thing. The GM uh, in Memphis did the exact yep. same thing. That's It's just universal. Uh, I've got to ask you about being a part now of the Rangers organization and how that's worked out for you. The Rangers have been fantastic. Um, you know, I've had a chance to work with a lot of different uh, major league clubs in, in the 23 years I've been in the game. and. 
Uh, the talent that they have coming through here is unbelievable, but they're also great guys. And uh, the way they approach things from the coaching staff we have here to the Rovers that come in to Mike Daly and, and everybody in, in Dallas, it's just remarkable how, how effective those guys are. Keenan Walker at the plate right now for Winston-Salem. Yeah, I saw Harry Spillman in there today, roving instructor. I thought you were having a cow milking contest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I remember Harry's uh, baseball card from back in the Astros days when I was a kid, so uh, I mentioned that to him quite frequently. How surprised are you, or are you surprised? Good off-speed pitch, and Parra will feel his position. One out. This is such a great vacation destination, and there's so much to do in Myrtle Beach, and yet you fill this place all the time. Yeah, it's a, it's a remarkable situation for us to have a chance to uh, to really take advantage of the 15 to 16 million tourists a year that come through here and uh, really uh, be a part of what drives people and, and draws them to Myrtle Beach and help affect that visitor's experience is a really special opportunity, and we, we have a great time with it. And it helps when you can put some talent on the field like you have. That's for sure. What do you think of this young catcher? Uh, Jorge's got an arm that is unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, I, I've compared it to a good drive off the tee where it, it <laughs> rises, it's going. Uh, he lets it go, and it looks like it's going to go 45 feet, and, uh, and next thing you know, he's tagging somebody out at second. You know, rarely when you're in the minor leagues do you get a compliment that was paid to him by Major League Baseball people that said it's the best arm for a position player in all of the minor leagues. It, it's just amazing. Uh, when you consider guys like him, uh, or, uh, Gallo at third base that yeah. we had here early in the year with his power. He's Chichi special. Gonzalez on the mound. I mean, we've just had some special kids come through here the last couple of years. Well, you got a beautiful facility, and the people still come. And uh, we're just amazed, I think. And we've talked over and over, and we hate to keep repeating ourselves, or I do, but it's so good to see that minor league baseball has become so fan friendly, and you continue to fill the parks because you make it an emphasis to make sure that it's affordable and also that these people can come and feel comfortable mingling with the players or just mingling with each other. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. Minor League Baseball has been great at uh, developing the, the creative fun promotions and, and really delivering a memorable fan experience. And we take a lot of pride in that. And, uh, we've got some great partnerships with folks like TicketReturn.com that are helping us to solve this tourism piece and how to sell tickets effectively mobily and so forth. So. Joey DeMichael with a base hit to right field and a dash with another base runner. And those kind of things are really helping us to take that fan experience to another level. And uh, so it's been a lot of fun here uh, to not only be a part of what we're doing, but uh, to kind of figure out some of the challenges that we have as an industry with partners like that and, and make a difference in the game. Well, Doug and Lauren and I have been to all levels of minor leagues, uh, Class A, AA, and AAA. One thing you all have in common, a lot of things, but one of the things you have is the young people you employ, you know, who may still be in college or this might be their first job out of school and they just work their tails off because they love being a part of baseball. How vital is that? Hey, Tara, beg your pardon, hold that thought. Starts the double play, nicely done. Pitcher's best friend and Para triggers it himself. We'll come back and talk some more with Andy in just a minute. Four nothing, Myrtle Beach. Back with more of the minor league baseball game of the week on the CBS Sports Network. Back in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, 4-0 Pelicans lead it over the dash. Dick Gabriel, Doug Flynn, Lauren Gardner were chatting with Andy Milovich, the general manager of the Pelicans. And just before that outstanding double play triggered by Para, uh, I asked you about the young people who work throughout minor league baseball to really help a guy like you. I, it's, it's amazing. I mean, I started my career back in 1990 with the South Bend White Sox when uh, in Kovaleski Stadium, and uh, John Nadolny gave me his first, my first chance to kind of get involved in the game. And, it's just a remarkable thing to, to continue in the game you love and to share it with kids that are coming up and, and, and pass it on to the generation of kids coming up. It really is what it's all about. And we rely on the young kids that are involved in our staff day in and day out, and they grind and grind and grind. And they love what they're doing, and they have a lot of fun, and uh, we enjoy it as much as the fans do. i got to ask you, our reporter, Lauren, was showing us Hop's heaven. <laughs> and, and of all of our travels, uh, there's no such thing as something that's more unique than the other, but I want to say that's the most unique thing we've seen. Every ballpark has something special, but you're growing your own hops and making your own beer. Yeah, it's amazing. So Mike Snow, who's our director of operations, is a beer fanatic, and uh, he planted that hops garden, and he uses those hops to brew his own beer. Yeah. And uh, we partnered with New South Brewery here locally, and they've taken our hops, produced it, and uh, we partnered with uh, Hospice, and uh, so a portion of every keg that we sell goes uh, back in a Hops for Hospice promotion. and. 
you know, for fans that are craft beer fanatics to have a chance to drink a beer that's brewed right here in the park, it's pretty special and a lot of fun. That's amazing. Yeah. Not not just brewed here in the town, but brewed right right here, here at the ballpark. In the ballpark, and it's gone over well. Yeah, it's been fantastic. Well, a tip of the cap to all of the people that work for you, because they, when we walked in the door, we sensed there was a special excitement about tonight. And uh, right from the very beginning, what can we do for you? How can we help you? And uh, so I, I tell you what, talking about hospitality, I would think Myrtle Beach wouldn't be that tough a sale, though, to get people to come out. No, that's for sure. I, our staff is uh, second to none. Our game day employees here are remarkable. And uh, I've had more than, uh, more than four or five of them tell me this is their dream job. Well, Nathan Barnett, uh, your fine uh, broadcaster and PR man, he's helped our guys in the truck. He's helped us. But we've, it's been that way really everywhere we've gone throughout the minor leagues. But uh, you can tell they're very proud of this, this ballpark. They really are. They do a fantastic job, and uh, they have more fun than any game day employees I've encountered uh, across all my stuff in fun. the game. Really? If you, can't, if you can't work, yeah, in baseball. Well, I mean, they don't say work baseball. They say play ball, right? <laughs> That's what I say is, uh, you know, this is a job, and obviously we have a lot of things we're trying to do in terms of ticket sales and marketing. Chris Grayson rips the shot in the right field. Lead-off single for the Pelicans. It, and there's a certain level of, of pressure and stress and, and work that comes with it. But at the, every, at the end of every day, I, I pull up the next morning and I come to a ballpark to go to work, and it, it doesn't get much better than that. And it's not a 40-hour-a-week job. We know that. <laughs> but that's why you signed up, isn't it? That is. Uh, you know, we, we reward our guys. We hang out at the Dead Blade Saloon out there in uh, right center field after each game and celebrate our victories and, uh, and our losses equally. And we have a lot of fun uh, putting on a show every night. Did so. I hear an invitation there? I, or did I miss <laughs> something? Or was that an invitation? It, the door is always open. Something I think that's always interesting is you get a good look at Christopher Bostic standing in with a man on first and nobody out is the fact that you do get players back from last year, but so many new faces, and yet that's part of the charm. Runner goes. Nice throw. Yeah, it looked like when Narvaez. he slid, he just stopped. Uh, almost uh, looked like he was going to be safe, but he slid and came up just a little bit short of the bag. That's a tough pitch to throw somebody Boy, out was. on, too. Omar Nevaez. Yep. And a tag. I yeah, run down and there's one out. That's impressive. That is very impressive. You're right. So Bostic now with the bases clean. But what I was going to say was that minor league baseball fans, part of the charm is learning the new guys every year. They're okay with that. You know, they don't, you know, they, they'd love to see the guy from last year who maybe signed their autograph, but, you know, they know they're going to get a new roster this year and they want to learn all about the new guys. Yeah, it's really exciting, and, and you try to uh, talk some guys up and, and mention to the community that you need to get out here and see this Joey Gallo because he won't be here oh, long. Oh, yeah. that's true. It, not a day goes by when somebody asks me uh, if he's still here. <laughs> Why not? What a talent he is. Good pick up and throw by Buckner, two down. You know, you think you get an autograph from one of these kids, and we watched some of them as they were signing, and, and some of them you could read and some of them you couldn't. But – the fact that they're signing an autograph, what that's going to be worth once they get to the big leagues down the road. Somebody's going to say, I've got his rookie card, or I've got him signed on something of baseball back from 2014, and then all of a sudden it's worth a lot of money. So I know that uh, the coaches obviously stress that to the kids, but that says something about their kids when they take time to go over and sign for the other youngsters. Yeah, these are, these are such young kids, uh, uh, you know, at 20, 21, 22 years old playing that I think it's easy for them to recall what it was like to be on the other side of that fence dreaming of be yeah. doing this. And uh, to have a chance to realize your dream here and to be on the cusp of the big leagues is such a special thing. Kevin Torres trying to find his way on with two outs, talking with Andy Milovich, the GM for Myrtle Beach. Now, I know last night you had fireworks, and the crowd is here tonight in part because you get fireworks coming up as well. That's become a real staple in minor league baseball, really in all of baseball. Yeah. Tell me about the work that goes into that. Well, we, we get together every fall, as most clubs do, and we have a staff retreat. We kind of brainstorm, look at what worked and what didn't work the past year and share ideas with other clubs, go to the minor league promotional seminars and, and steal all the best ideas we have out there. And, <laughs> you know, it's uh, – we throw everything against the wall, see what works, and uh, and try to just keep fine-tuning and get better and better every day. And fireworks always work, don't they? Never disappoint. Fireworks and dollar beers seem to be <laughs> a magic staple. 
Yeah, we've seen some thirsty Thursdays in our yeah. travels across the country. And people have been well behaved, I'll say that. Barnum makes the play. And that'll do it for the Pelicans. Andy, thank you so much thank for you. everything tonight. Thanks thank for you. visiting and for all the hospitality. Really enjoyed it. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Andy. Thanks right. very much. Andy Milovich, general manager of the Pelicans, who lead it after six, four nothing here in Myrtle Beach. Back with more minor league game of the week action on the CBS Sports Network. Back in Winston-Salem where the Pelicans have jumped out to a 4-0 lead on the Winston-Salem dash. Dick Gabriel, Doug Flynn back downstairs to our roving reporter, Lauren Gardner. Lauren. Well, you guys, most teams have a ball boy and a bat boy, but the Pelicans have a ball dog. As you see here, Deuce, he brings the balls out to the umpires at once in the second inning and then once in the sixth inning. He's actually the younger brother of Dinger. And Dinger actually passed away a couple years ago, but Dinger was named Dog of the Year two times in a row by Contemporary K9 Magazine. And he was also featured on CNN Headline News. And you know what? Deuce is having a good time down here. He's six years old, and I think he's a little confused because he normally gets a treat after he delivers the ball. So we should probably let him go. Thank you very much, buddy. <laughs> pant oh, once for no. yes, pant twice for no. <laughs> he does do a great job, and I'll say this, that when he makes an appearance, the crowd absolutely loves it. And again, just part of the personality of Pelicans Park here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. But, you know, Andy was talking about the fact that they all get together in the offseason as Keon Barnum steps up, tries to give Winston-Salem Another base runner, Dash has had somebody on base in all but two of the innings tonight, just hasn't been able to bring anybody around. But we've talked to a lot of the minor league folks across the country who freely and openly share ideas and share gimmicks. Right at Garia, one out. Well, the bottom line is that you're promoting a game that benefits everybody. Exactly. And I think you see that probably more in baseball than you do in anything else because you have so many minor league ball clubs, whereas in the NBA, the NFL, there's not as many. Or the, so when you've got this many teams, all right, how do we help each other and continue to keep people coming to the game, entertaining them, and drawing crowds? And they have done a marvelous job of getting people in the parks this year. Nick Basto steps in, drew a walk in the fourth inning, singled back in the second. We were talking earlier to Mike Daly about the injuries to the Rangers big club. Now that's had a ripple effect throughout the minor leagues. But this Winston-Salem club arguably is missing its best three players right now, including shortstop Tim Anderson hit by a pitch, broke his right wrist. Mm. Frank Montas injured his right knee during a workout. They're on the seven day. And so is Courtney Hawkins, who just last night Fine outfielder in left field. He crashed into the retaining wall down the left field line. Made the catch, but pitched over the retaining wall and banged his head on the ground. So they're going to hold Ow. him out for a week. 2-1 pitch. See ya. Go back. Look up. Good night. <laughs> Nick Basto enjoying himself in a dash uniform. And finally, Winston-Salem on the board, it's four to one. Would you say that ball was hit pretty well? And again, got it up into a little bit of breeze. The wind not blowing nearly as much as it was, but that was pretty much all Nick Basto. Yeah, he knew he had it as soon as he hit that ball. And as you say, from left field, 
left center on over to the line. It's really going to carry, especially tonight. So now Grant Buckner. Bounced or rather popped out to second his last time up. 0 for 2 on the night. Beg your pardon, this is Narvaez. 5'10", 175 from Venezuela. Signed by Tampa Bay as a non-drafted free agent back in 08. White Sox made him a Rule 5 selection back in 2013. Two-0 pitch, right at Bostic. Two out. You, know, you mentioned earlier Tommy Thompson, the manager for Winston-Salem. Played all over the place. Played in the farm systems for the Braves and the White Sox. Got up to AAA with the Richmond Braves, the Buffalo Bisons. Played in Vancouver, played for the Hawaii Islanders. That's not a bad gig. No. Nope. Even managed in my old club with the Reds some, Baltimore, White Sox. I tell you, some of them make it a career. And they have to have a wife that really supports them because it's not glamorous. You don't get paid a lot of money. You're away from home a lot. And that is vital to the success of these coaches. Grant Buckner trying to find his way on for the first time tonight. Well, Thompson also managed in the farm systems for the Reds and the Orioles, was a roving catching instructor in the White Sox organization. In fact, uh, at one point, the Orioles presented him with a Cal Ripken Senior Memorial Award for the work he did in the Baltimore farm system. I like in Class A ball, too, you'll always see your managers coaching third base. Good look at Tommy, Oklahoma City native. Played college ball at OU. Boy, he came with a 2 0 curve ball, now he comes back with a 2 1 changeup. Made the mistake to Basto, otherwise, Parra has been pretty sharp, but he's got some pretty good defense behind him, and he's fielded his position well. I'll tell you, Alberto, Hanser Alberto, has really impressed me. I mean, from a Class A shortstop, yep. he has really looked solid. Off speed again. Talked about Gary Ward, oh. the Winston-Salem hitting coach. J.R. Purdue, what a story. pitching coach for Winston-Salem. We'll tell you a little bit more about him. 3-2 pitch. And we'll do it all over again. 3-2 changeup. Yeah, I hope we get to the Purdue story because that is absolutely amazing. Buckner in the Appalachian League three years ago led that league in doubles trying to climb the ladder in the White Sox organization. Fourth in West Virginia U school history in doubles. Good battle going on right here now between yep. Parr and Buckner. We walked into the Winston-Salem dugout before the game started just to say hello and see if we could talk to some of the players and coaches. And they all were quite aware that there was going to be game of the world tonight. So they call in all of their friends and they you could see a certain excitement. I like that game of the world. How about an off speed pitch on three and two, but Alfaro just couldn't hang on. You know, he's thrown him two change ups on three and two and now the big curve ball. You know, we talk so much about that young man behind the plate for Myrtle Beach, but you know, he has a brother, Alejandro, who just signed last week with the White Sox, only 16 years old. My goodness. 28th best international prospect 
in this year's group. He's a catcher. Para kills it foul. Good battle here between pitcher and hitter. That's pretty much what defines baseball. You got a lot of guys backing you up, but when it boils down to it, it's just you and that man out there on the mound. I like the hat color. You like that? I do. Like the nickname. You know, we should have been collecting hats from every place we've been. Because you need more hats. Yeah, I do. A 3-2 again. Came with a fastball. Big hop for Mendez. Uh-oh. Just getting him at first, thanks to Torres climbing the ladder. Winston-Salem finally scratches the big fly by Nick Basto. 4-1 Myrtle Beach. Back in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Dick Gabriel, Doug Flynn, Lauren Gardner. Myrtle Beach leading 4-1 now over Winston-Salem. Let's take a look now at the MILB.com news from around the league for this past week. A big moment for Mike Hessman. He broke the International League record for home runs. A veteran third baseman hit number 259 in Iowa League play Monday for Toledo. Manny Ramirez, player coach now in Iowa, went deep Monday in the 7-6, went over Omaha, finished up three for four. Of course, we saw Iowa earlier this year, and it was the day that Ramirez signed with the Cubs. Try to mentor some of the young players there. Some more headlines on the way for you. Interesting approach, though, by Iowa to sign Manny Ramirez. Luis Mendez looking for his first base. Hit 0 for 2 on the night, struck out his last time up. Kind of an interesting approach, too. If you break a record in home runs in the AAA, that you're not in the big leagues a little bit more. Yep. Crash Craddock knows all about that. New pitcher on the bump for Winston Salem. Dave Putman. Mendez ropes it the other way, but on the run is Keenan Walker making the grab. One out. Here's a good look at Putman, 6'2", 200 from Doylestown, PA. Split last year between Great Falls and Kannapolis. Undrafted free agent signed back in 2012. On in relief of J.B. Wendelkin, who's on the hook. The dash down, four to one. Leadoff man Chris Garia stands in. And Third baseman Grant Buckner will in on the grass. Hold. Gary a one for three on the night. Singled scored a run back in the third. More headlines now. Brooklyn will hold a Seinfeld promotion night this weekend. On the fifth in the spirit of minor league promotions, the biggest feature of the night, how about the Keith Hernandez bobblehead? Chopper run down. It'll be Strong tough. Strong throw. Gary with all that speed. That big hop just couldn't come down fast enough. Yeah, once I saw him take that step backwards, you knew it was going to be a tough play because Garia could run. You see the shortstop? Oh, yeah, he beats it pretty easily. And he helped the umpire make the call as well. Absolutely. You can tell that's where those track stars are. <laughs> well, you can tell Barnum did everything he could stretching out. So a man on, one out. Answer Alberto at the plate. One for three, a run score. Runner goes. Boy. Narvaez came up strong again, but boy, it sure looked like he beat that. You know what? The guys are sliding into second, but they're not getting to the bag, I don't think. Looks like it's almost slowing them up. He gets rid of the ball quick, he slides, and he just stops. Yep, they got him. Banged him on the head. Got him on the head, you're right. But I guess because of the wetness of the dirt, they're oh. just not going as fast into the bag as they normally do. Strike delivered to Alberto, one ball, one strike. I love the idea of the Seinfeld promotion. 
in Brooklyn. Of course, Keith Hernandez in one of the more comical right two episode arcs, and they were finally able to turn Newman and Kramer around because for the longest time they hated Keith Hernandez. <laughs> the Magic Loogie story finally came to light. And of course, the, they're going to involve Junior Mints, Big Salads, a Pez Dispenser, a Marlboro Eye Fishing Contest. Also, the All-Stars making rehab visits across minor league baseball. Bryce Harper last weekend a three-run home run game for the Harrisburg Senators. CC Sabathia working his way back as well. MILB.com, your home to all the latest news, stats, and schedules from around the minors. Check it out today at MILB.com. Stay up to date on all the action. Back with more from Pelicans Park. Minor League Baseball Game of the Week, CBS Sports Network. Back in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, where the Pelicans lead Winston-Salem 4-1. to Dick Gabriel, Doug Flynn back downstairs to Lauren Gardner. Lauren. Well, you know, earlier we talked about the Winston-Salem pitching coach in J.R. Purdue. And, you know, not only is he a good pitching coach, but he's also an American hero. He served our country in the Marines for four years, continuing a family legacy. His father was an Army Ranger in World War II, and his mother was in the Air Force. And, you know, I talked to him about how he was able to instill some of the values that he learned in the military to some of his players. And you said the biggest thing is during that national anthem. I've caught a few of my players goofing off during the anthem. And I walked up to them and I asked them if three minutes of their time was worth some of the sacrifices that our veterans made and some of the men and women serving in our military right now made. And they said absolutely not. So he's been able to really change their perspective on life. And, you know, during some of the rain delays and in the bullpen, he's able to talk to some of his pitchers and players about some of the things that are really important in this world and he said you know obviously I'm here to teach him the mechanics of pitching and of baseball but I'm really here to teach him a lot about life and what to appreciate thanks Lauren that is a great story and you got a good look at that. actually it wasn't uh, J.R. Purdue but Terrence Marin he is one of the young pitchers who J.R. Purdue has really helped and said uh, told us earlier that he has just been a great help to him as well as these other guys but boy as you said what a story for that young man, J.R. Purdue. There's a good look at Abel De Los Santos, the new pitcher for the Pelicans, taking over for Para. And a good outing leaves a chance to pick up another victory. You know, Para was outstanding. He had very good control, could throw all three of his pitches anytime that he wanted to. Purdue, I carry a coin with me. And it was given to me by a four star general. Good fastball right there. Name of Spider Nyland. And I was showing him my uh, coin before the game. You know what the, the deal is behind that, don't you? If you happen to go into a place and you've got a coin and someone else doesn't, you drink free all night. How about that? So they say. Boy, I tell you what, I've got such respect for those men and women. and. Here we are tonight at just where you're supposed to be on the 4th of July at a baseball game. Almost Purdue the 4th. He's played four years at George Mason. Injured his arm before he could play. Uh-oh. Hammered by Ron Dunn. That'll stay in the ballpark. Garia almost overruns it. Yeah. One out. But how about never getting the opportunity to play pro ball because you hurt your arm, so he enlisted the Marines. How about that? I know that's. But you know wow. he comes from a military family. His father was an Army Ranger in World War II. Mom was an Air Force instructor. One of his uncles fought in three different wars in the Navy. Another uncle, a crew chief in the Air Force, and then when Jr. left the Marine Corps after four years, he became a college pitching coach and caught on with the White Sox. You know, talking to him earlier, he and Gary Ward both very humble. Said they're just here for the kids. They don't need any TV time or anything. Said the kids are doing all the work. They're just here to help them get on their way up the ladder. Luis Parra in the dugout now with the opportunity to become the first Pelican to win five games this year as Christopher Bostic makes the play. And what's interesting is Parra was the first Pelican to win a game. The first to win two, then three, and then four. <laughs> and he's not the lead pitcher in the rotation. Wow. Well, he's starting to get, when we talked earlier, 
with the coaching staff. They said he's just finding his stride now because he's got command of all of his pitches, which he didn't have earlier. But uh, he's a kid that probably won't be in this league very much longer. Yeah. He has been up and down. Now, on his first start, he took a no hitter into the fifth inning. That was against Wilmington. <laughs> Keenan Walker 0 for 3 on the night. Now that's just not fair right there. <laughs> Throwing 92, then you come back with an 81 mile an hour change. That's just not fair. Falls right off. And look at that, the movement on that ball is yeah. amazing. De Los Santos out of the Dominican Republic, first year in Myrtle Beach. Boy, kind of a slinger, so you know his ball's going to be moving all the time. Third appearance against Winston Salem this year. He's gone a couple of scoreless innings against the Dash. Oh. That looked like a little slide piece right there. It didn't break a lot, but. Boy, just had him out in front going from 92 to 82. And if you can locate and change speeds like that, you're going to be very successful at any level. Walker drafted by the Cubs in the 16th round out of high school. Phillies took him in the 2010 amateur draft and after his first year of Juco ball, but he hung in there and the White Sox took him in the first round. 47th overall in 2011. 3-2. Mm. Not a bad start for Abel De Los Santos of Myrtle Beach. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth. Pelicans 4-1. Minor League Baseball Game of the Week. Sumo wrestlers are here in Myrtle Beach where the Pelicans lead it 4-1 over the Winston-Salem Dash. Dick Gabriel, Doug Flynn, Lauren Gardner. There's J.R. Purdue. Winston-Salem dug out. Ex-Marine and now an outstanding pitching coach. Take a look at how things have unfolded here tonight. Early in the ball game, in fact, first inning, Nick Williams hammers the ball deep to left. And a 1-0 lead for Myrtle Beach in the third inning. All kinds of problems for Winston Salem. Hit by a pitch was Jorge Alfaro with a bases loaded. That made it a 2-1 ball game. Bases loaded, nobody out in fact. And then one ground ball drives in a run. A sack fly drives in a run. A three run fourth makes it 4-0. Then in the seventh inning, Winston Salem on the board in a big way. Nick Basto bashes one to left center field. And that's where we are right now. Pelicans. Leaving the dash by three. Luis Parra with a great outing, four strikeouts in his seven innings. When Delkin didn't pitch too badly, but made a few mistakes, now he's on the hook. Home runs by Basto and Williams, and a new pitcher for Winston Salem. Yeah, Hagen is coming to the game. A big lefty, six foot six, left-hander. Or excuse me. Uh, yep. Yep, 6'6", 235 out of New York. Larchmont. Larchmont, New York, 31st round in 2013. This will be his 20th appearance. ERA up around a little over four and a half. Gets Nick Williams to bounce to Grant Buckner with his first pitch. Good start for Sean Hagen. Played in Great Falls last year. Dash trying to keep it close. Put up five runs last night. And just as Myrtle Beach did this evening, jumped out with a home run in the first inning. Now Alfaro got the RBI the hard way back in the third inning. As Doug mentioned earlier, some already call him the legend. No pressure there. No. 
Well, you're either the legend or the bear. Two nicknames, and he hadn't got out of Class A ball yet. Just imagine what's going to happen. And I tell you, we've seen him throw to second and some to first on some strikeouts. He does have an excellent arm. But interestingly, the man behind the plate right now, Omar Narvaez, has thrown out two runners tonight. Nobody's run yet or really had much of an opportunity to run on Alfaro. One two pitch. Ooh, change up. Well, that's what you like to see. Your catcher get outside of that runner, get in line with your first baseman, make a good throw down there instead of trying to throw over him or around him. Another boy, that's a lot of movement on that pitch right there, and a great job of blocking the ball. Watch this catcher, he'll move out, make sure that the runner's not in his way, throw a seed down to first. Two weeks ago down in Charleston, I guess I should say up in Charleston, there's a good look at Narvaez. We saw a catcher hit a runner in that situation in the helmet, but the runner was on the inside part of the baseline and was called out. Popper yeah, called. I never stood those lines. I thought they were awfully tough to run in. <laughs> Buckner had him played perfectly. And a good inning for Winston-Salem. Three up, three down, nothing across for Myrtle Beach. Dash down to its last three outs. Four to one Pelicans. Minor League Baseball Game of the Week here on the CBS Sports Network. Back in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Gorgeous evening. The rain is gone. Four to one Pelicans lead it. Dick Gabriel, Doug Flynn back downstairs. Lauren Gardner, Lauren. Well, last week we had the Johnny Cash Burger and the Glazed Donut Burger in Sacramento. And this week we have chicken and waffle bites. And this isn't your average, everyday, ordinary fried chicken. This chicken right here is fried in waffle batter. Oh. And what makes that even better? Yes, I did hear you guys salivating up there. It's, yep. it's audible. Um, <laughs> you dip it in the syrup here. So I found some friends to help share these with me. What's your name, honey? Emily. Emily, how are you? You're doing wonderful. You're about to be better, huh? Do you want some chicken and waffle bites? Yeah. All right. She, she's going for it. You know what? Her mom like kind of gave him away and said, we heard he had some, but they're going to go ahead and have some. Emily, will you hold this for me or here, Mom? I'm going to try one, too, because this is too Get good. Get in there. Why does that not shock us? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it's like brunch. <laughs> this is fantastic. Oh, man. Wouldn't you guys love to have some of this? Yes, we would. Here. Now you're right. We are Life celebrating. is pretty good. I'm telling Ooh, you what. Man. You know, it's funny. Almost immediately when we walked into this ballpark, people <laughs> said, you got to try the chicken waffle bites. I thought they were like chicken sort of in the shape of a waffle. No, they're actually chicken waffles. Waffle. Yeah. <laughs> How about that? Great. Thank you, Lauren. And yeah, you got to take care of the truck now. Everybody in the truck's starving. Joey DeMichael will lead things off, trying to find his way home for the second time. Base hit back in the sixth inning. I tell you, this kid's come in throwing good. I said 92. He's hit 94 on the gun and comes back with that off speed at 81 or 82 like that. Look at that. Wow. Second consecutive strikeout. One down here in the ninth. What's his ERA doing up around 4-5 or 4-7? Four, four, one bad outing will do that to a short reliever. Yep. As you well know. Now Jason Coates drew a walk back in the fourth inning, bounced into a double play, grounded to short. Texas Christian University product, another Dallas, Texas native. Actually grew up in Plano, a suburb of Dallas. And we've seen a lot of kids from Texas. I thought football was their primary they play sport. play a lot of baseball down there. Last year, second in the Sally League in RBIs and doubles, fourth in hits. Why you see him up here in high A this season. That's something you'd never used to see a few years ago. Low A and high A. Yep. And now with so many players and a lot of more different teams with the organizations, I think it's a good thing. Working his way back from a torn ACL. You see a lot of kids that'll start off and they'll play rookie ball, and that means that Maybe a little green and young. They're coming right out of high school uh, or maybe just out of a junior college. So they'll put them in rookie ball to get them some extra work. Right out of school, literally. Right out of school, literally. And they'll have what's called a short season. Yep. So they'll go out to the spring training site. And then as they progress, they'll start moving them around the organization. 
So their first full season would might be low A or high A ball. Uh, yes. The coach finds his way on. Of course, you know, these kids are used to playing 60 games or not much more than that. Now all of a sudden you're asked to come in and play 140 ball games and some of them aren't used to it. So it takes some adjusting. Keon Barnum out of Tampa, Florida, played his high school ball at King High School. Good program down there. 0 for 3 tonight. Number 13 prospect in the White Sox system, according to MLB.com. Spent time last year on a DL, had some surgery. A first round draft pick in 2012. They had committed to play at Miami. White Sox came through with a bonus of $950,000. He said, no mm. thanks to the Canes, I'm a White Sox. That might have got my attention as well. I think all those zeros might have. Well, a little trouble now. Maybe we're seeing a little bit why he has struggled. And as he walked Coates on four pitches, now coming back here, two straight balls. And you would think that they'll be taken until he gets a strike. We mentioned all the injuries to this Winston-Salem team before players started going in. There's a good look at Joe Mecklick, the manager for Myrtle Beach. Boy, and he told us early in the game, does it change his expression? No, he doesn't. Poker face. He's been there. He knows what it's like to make a few mistakes. Yep. Told us the story of once he was in the outfield and dropped the ball right to him. He said, so I know I've done it. When these kids do it, I'm not going to get on them too much. I had a coach once tell me, look, if I act like my hair's on fire, how are they going to act? Exactly. I mentioned Winston-Salem with the injuries. Before people started going down, this was one of this is the only team in the Carolina League top three in hitting and pitching. Mm. And you're looking at one of the younger teams in the league yes. too, and the Pelicans. Off speed. That's Nasty. a money maker right Nasty. there. Nasty. You go from low 90s to 77 mile an hour, and you can put the ball over the plate. You're going to have hitters off stride the whole game. Take a good look here. It looks like a little breaking ball, which it is. And pitch before that was 92, and then you go to 77. Big discrepancy. 2-2. Two, two. De Los Santos from the Dominican Republic. Non-drafted free agent back in 2010. Had strikeouts and all but three appearances this year. You can see why. Whoa. Waiting on that breaking pitch. Boy, Barnum just, you can see why he was such a high draft choice. But when he's got behind, that's when he's been throwing a lot of the breaking balls, and he was just sitting on that breaking ball. Dying run at the plate. And who else but Nick Basto, who went yard his last time up. The DH is two for two tonight. Single along with a home run and a walk. Just joined the ball club. Fifth round draft pick out of Archbishop McCarthy High School down in Florida. He had committed to play for Florida International. Boy, big kid, too. Just looks like an athlete. 6'2", 210. Try to tie the game right there. Sent him down to extended spring training this year, even though he hit 333 in the spring. Now De Los Santos ahead in the count, no balls, two strikes. Boy, not messing around. He threw fastball first pitch. It looked like he cut it a little bit. Ball ran away, then come back with 94 mile an hour fastball with some giddy up on it. Mendez well off the line at third. You got to think this is either going to be a fastball that's way off the plate or he's got to come back with a breaking ball. 
Column A. Column A. That's How about right. the pop in that mitt, though? Yeah, what a good live arm he has. Now, if he's going to throw him the breaking ball, he needs to keep it down and away and not for a strike. Maybe coming back with another heater. Okay. Off speed. Beautiful. Second strike out of the inning, two down. 94 to 79, Dick. That's just outstanding. As you like to say, just not fair. It's not fair, and he has the same <laughs> arm motion with it, so yes. that's what makes it so tough. Omar Nervez will try to keep Winston Salem in the game. Two outs. Here in the ninth inning, he is the tying run. 0 for 3 tonight. Not nearly far enough. Nick Williams makes the grab. And that'll do it. The Pelicans bounce back after the loss last night and hang up a 4 to 1 victory over the Winston Salem Dash. Rewarding the fans who braved the early weather to come out and watch their team. And they saw a good one tonight by the Pelicans. Back with more from TicketReturn.com Field, Pelicans Park in Myrtle Beach. Where the home team wins it 4 to 1. Minor League Baseball Game of the Week on the CBS Sports Network. Back in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, where the Pelicans have beaten the Winston-Salem Dash 4-1. to one. Dick Gabriel, Doug Flynn. It has just become a gorgeous evening. The winds have even died down. The rain held off. Great crowd. Got to see a really fine ball game. We did. It was well played. When you look on the board in a Class A ball game and you've got no errors up there, you know it's been a good ball game. Crowd waiting for the fireworks. And a man who provided some fireworks is with our own Lauren Gardner. Lauren. Certainly did. Nick Williams in the first inning with that solo home run. How good did that one feel? Uh, it felt great, especially after battling yesterday, having a tough outing and us losing pretty bad. But it felt great. Yeah, to start, start, start it off good. This is well after the All-Star break. You guys are actually heading into the playoffs. How do you think this team is gelling so far? Uh, we're doing great. I honestly don't think a team can beat us in any level. Our team's awesome. We have a lot of prospects on our team. And yeah, our team competes, and we're a comeback team. And how about the efforts of Luis Parra tonight? And that starts seven full innings. Oh, uh, great effort. Went right at him, didn't care, and it was, yeah, it was great. He really helped us out, too, in defense. Not many balls hit, so yeah. How do you plan on celebrating the win tonight? I think you have about a seven and a half hour drive. Yeah, probably uh, sleeping. That's about <laughs> it. Yeah. The glamorous life of the miners. And how about the crowd tonight? Despite the hurricane, they came out and supported you guys. Yeah, it was great. You know, TV, televised game, nice crowd. It, it felt like a playoff game. You know what? This is your chance, Nick. Who would you like to say hello to? Uh, my two little brothers, Seth and Jonah. I miss them. I haven't seen them in about five months. So, yeah. Oh, that's really sweet. All right. Well, congratulations. Go celebrate. <laughs> Don't Thanks. cry, Lauren. Nick Williams out of Galveston, Texas, and what a night he had. We'll take a break, come back and wrap things up from Pelicans Park in just a minute. Minor League Baseball Game of the Week on the CBS Sports Network. Back in Myrtle Beach with the crowd hanging around waiting for fireworks, and as we mentioned, they saw them from Nick Williams, our player of the game. It could have been Luis Parra, though, what a night he had. And as advertised, he came in with, a, with a, a big effort off that left arm. Well, we see him with a great breaking ball. He had command of all of his pitches. His fastball, good curveball, and a straight change. But he also fielded his position very well tonight. Had a couple of balls right back to him, which he turned into double plays. There's a good breaking ball. That, you know, that. When you have that kind of command of three pitches and you're around the plate, you're going to be tough to beat every night. Well, we mentioned earlier he came in the third-ranked left-hander the, among starting pitchers in the entire Rangers system. That says a lot. It does say a lot because we know a lot of kids that are in that organization right now that throw well. But I think I was impressed as much not only with his command, but he filled his position well. When you can get a pitcher to do that, it's just a big bonus for your ball club. He was part of a group no-hitter last year in Hickory. And also, he's from the same hometown as the New York Mets starting pitcher, Bartolo Colon. So they 
Absolutely common down there in the Dominican Republic. And now, the, as you can see, the fireworks are underway. And that, that, what a great way to start the 4th of July. Weekend. Is this awesome or what? Beautiful way to get into the holiday weekend. And it's, it, fireworks never disappoint. It's outstanding. Happy Fourth Day, everybody that's watching, and a big thank you to all of our friends here at Myrtle Beach that made us feel right at home. That'll do it for Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, with a final score, Pelicans 4-1. For Doug Flynn, Lauren Gardner, our entire crew, I'm Dick Gabriel. Be sure to join us next Thursday, July 10th, as the Dayton Dragons host the South Bend Silverhawks, 7 p.m. Eastern, on the CBS Sports Network. You're going to like that Dayton ballpark. They sell out almost every night, but we loved it here in Myrtle Beach. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Our thanks to everybody here in Myrtle Beach. Thanks so much for joining us. Have a great 4th of July weekend, everybody. That's it. Good night from Myrtle Beach.